Okay, so assuming you have the um, the download tool working, I'm gonna show you how you make a basic uh, Atmel Studio project to, to talk to it. So if you go File, New Project, you'll get a, a list of project types. You need to make sure you select GCC C executable, not ASF, for example, um, which I think is the default. ASF is an Atmel Studio framework. It's got a bunch of libraries and you have to define a board and stuff. We're trying to just talk to, to pretty low level here. So I'm gonna call this test blank three, for example, just a arbitrary name and hit okay. The next thing it's gonna do is ask me what device I wanna use. Um, and I'm just gonna search in the top right here for ATmega328P. If you don't see the ATmega come up, by the way, um, when you install Atmel Studio, you have to select the eight bit microcontrollers. If you didn't select that, you'll have to rerun the installer to get that. And where that device come from is, by the way, so this is the device that's on the microcontroller itself or on the Nano itself. So if we look at the Nano, there's a bunch of chips on this thing, right? So the backside has like some USB voltage regulator as well as the actual microcontroller. Um, and if you were to zoom in and take a look at the microcontroller itself, it's a little hard to see, but there's a part number on that that says Mega328P. Um, so you sometimes might have to change or check what the actual part number is to, to make sure that it's um, you know, correct for your exact device. So right now, the, the Mega328 is the right one. So the first thing you should do um, is we get this base framework, and all we're going to do is we're going to take this framework and we're going to go build, build solution. I'm just going to check that the, the base design is working, right? So before we do anything else, before we start messing with it, Let's run build, and what you should get is at the top here we have our code. Um, in the bottom we'll have any warnings coming up here. I'm just gonna collapse these together so that it takes up less room. So we have an error list now, I just move them on top of each other, and any build information. So this is the output of the C compiler itself, and we can see it running through. We can see it say how much of the device we're taking up, um, which is gonna be almost nothing right now, and it says one succeeded. So if we get succeeded, we have no errors, that's good. That means our, our project is valid, right? If we had some syntax errors in there, what's gonna happen is it's gonna give us a bunch of errors here, so that's bad. We don't want that. Okay, so build, build solution. And then I'm just gonna go run tools nano download. Um, so this, um, Right now, it's not actually doing anything, right? Because we don't have a project uh, programmed in there. Um, but what we should see is that you can confirm if it works okay. And yep, that did go okay. It found the device and stuff like that. Um, so again, you might have to check the COM number as I talked about in the setup one. If you don't have the right COM number, um, change that under tools, external tools, and just change this COM number here to match the COM number um, if you run the device manager, then that'll show you what the COM number is. So just make sure those match if you have problems. So you can add COM4, so that's all good. Um, okay, so that did nothing though because we have no uh, output here. So the, the first thing we need to do is we need to define one bit um, as an output. And if I use this shift notation, one shift left five, this shifts bit uh, a one five bits over, um, which is basically gonna build a variable that looks something like this, or actually like this, right? So there's four zeros, five zeros, and then the one five over. So it takes that one, one, two, three, four, five places. Um, so it's a little easier to just write one shift left five. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we need to toggle so that turned on the LED output driver. Um, and we could, for example, if we want to start simple, let's just turn the LED on. So if we look at our board right now, we have a power LED, right? That was on just because there's power. That's not too exciting. And we have this other LED that's off. So if I just do this, then that should drive a one to port B pin five. And so you always have to run build to rebuild it and then run 
download. So it's always, don't forget. So one problem can be that if you forget to run one of these steps, you're going to load old code. That's a really classic uh, problem when you're doing embedded development is you think you're changing something, but you're not actually changing it. Um, it can be a little tricky because if there's like an error in the build, for example, you might not notice this. So always double check you build and you programmed. So you can see now this LED is on. So we had an LED that was off and now it's on. Um, so that's all our code did. So the final thing we might want to do is actually put a bit of a delay in there. So what we could do is we could say port B XOR. So if we XOR something, it's always going to um, uh, toggle that bit, right? And XOR is going to toggle it. Now, if we just run this as is, right? You might say like, great, now I have a loop that's toggling. What's going to happen is it just looks like it's on. And it's actually just blinking too fast to be able to see this. Um, I should also mention, so one other thing you, you'll notice um, is that when I do the download, so I'm going to run the download here, and you'll see the RX and TX LEDs blink. So that's a way to know the, the download is working. So if I go Tools, Nano Download, it's very faint, but you'll see these LEDs blink a little bit. So that's during the download process. Um, okay, so back to the, the code here. Um, what we need is we need a delay in here. So luckily, we have something called util slash delay.h. And we can, oops, just go underscore delay ms let's say 100 milliseconds. And so this will give me a 100 millisecond delay, roughly 100 milliseconds. This isn't a super accurate library. Um, and when I do this, you'll notice right away there's, uh, there's an error already. So fcpu not defined. Uh, what's going on here is the library actually needs to know how fast our device is running. So we use a C define, we go star define, F, or hash define, fcpu. Um, and I'm going to define it as 16, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, UL. Um, UL just means unsigned long, so don't worry too much about that. It looks a bit funky, but it's just something you always need there. And then we go build, build solution. Um, now if we download this, so there's no errors, and if I run tools nano download, what we see is that right away we get this nice little quick blink LED. So we're now running a blinky LED. Um, so that's all I want to you know show is that uh, this is a real quick way to validate that you've done the setup correctly. Um, from here, what you can do is you can do a little more advanced work with um, some of the, the pin usage. So right now I'm clobbering all of these bits. Um, you'll notice I just assign it to one shift left five, which is fine because I'm not using them for anything else. Um, you also might want to make use of some of the macros that are going to help you uh, understand this. But check out the next video on um, GPIO to understand a little more about what we're actually doing here, um, which should be helpful for the actual lab when you go to make a slightly more complicated program. But if you can get this blinky guy running like this, then you know you validated almost everything. We've got a, a device that's talking to um, the computer here, you know, that's running Atmel Studio, um, and we can do the rest of the development on that.